You're tuned into Recovery TV, the voice of hope, with your host, John J. Tassoni Jr. Discussions and information on addiction and mental health issues. Now, here's John and today's guest. Welcome to Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. Thank you for watching this episode. The numbers are rising, the people are getting sicker every day. We're going to lose more people this year than we did last year. I want to let you meet two of my new guests today. Jonathan and Kathleen. Hello, John. And we're, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, one is Ms. Diorsi's business, which is Integrated Healthcare Solutions. And then I'm going to talk to my new friend, Jonathan, about his venture and his life with substance use and mental health. Welcome and thank you for joining us again. Thank you. Thank you so much. So tell, me, tell my viewers about your business. Thank you. So Integrative Healthcare Solutions, um, we really refer to it as an innovative grassroots 501c3 nonprofit organization. So we're made up of a team of certified health coaches, peer recovery coaches, griefs coaches, and then we have an extended team and beyond. Um, but we're really here to bring the holistic healing pathway to the state of Rhode Island because for 34 years, you know, I have lived this. My brother struggled for 20 years from substance use and mental health, and he unfortunately fatally overdosed 15 years ago. And as I really look around today, I'm still not seeing anything really different being done. So mm. it's helping up to a point, but nothing is getting to the root cause. You know, and I hate to say this, but I gotta say it. It's the same old, same old. 435 last year. And we had still had four months to count. I don't even know what the actual number is. And, and I spoke the other day at the Eagle Scout uh, ceremony. I'm tired of going to wakes and funerals. I'm yeah. tired. Even if the people I don't know, I go just, be, just yeah. because of my position. But I'm tired. People, sh the young folks today. And I, and I say young, but, you know, in Smithfield, a couple weeks ago, we had a 64-year-old. So it, 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 the spectrum is yeah. getting bigger. Absolutely. It's getting bigger. Whether the older folks are not getting their medications for pain yeah. and they go to the street and they pick up something and they overdose, it, it's just heart-wrenching to me. Heart-wrenching. Yeah. Yeah. The young, the old, the middle-aged, it's like one right after another. Well, and I would even say that, you know, the deaths is one component, but then how many people are just living decades of their lives right. stuck in pain, they don't feel well, they don't have energy, they can't sleep, just all these things. So they're not living their true life and their true purpose. And so ultimately, this is what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. They're tired and they can't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and then the state says, well, you know, we've got so many people on Medicare, Medicaid, they can't work. Well, there's a reason why they can't work, right. you know? But um, you brought along a guest. Yeah. Jonathan, yeah. welcome. Thank you. So, Jonathan, I want you to tell my viewers your story. So, uh, you know, I've been affected by addiction uh, since I was a, a child. Um, I came out addicted. My parents, biological parents, were addicts um, to opiates, heroin, crack cocaine, and uh, that's how my life started. I was thankfully um, and gratefully uh, adopted by my aunt and uncle and they gave me a different outlook on life um, that looked like pretty much um, sports, going to school, good grades, honors, and um, playing piano and, and being in the orchestra. I grew up um, practicing my piano every day before school for an hour um, and I think what happened was I just lost sight of the beliefs that were being um, put on me. And I think because of the um, transition from being adopted at, at a later age and, and being in foster care and going through abuse in many different ways just caused me to turn to marijuana. And then marijuana turned into, in my 20s, into opiates. Um, 
and I lived for a long time, 15 years, getting high, uh, living on the streets of Mass Ave in Boston, um, eating out of dumpsters, sleeping in dumpsters, stealing from stores, you know, um, to survive. Uh, those were my survival methods. And I know they're not the best, but it got me to where I am today, sitting at this table um, and working and still continuing to work on a daily basis on myself. Um, IHS, uh, Catherine's nonprofit, Integrative Healthcare Solutions, since they have been brought in my life nine months ago, I have not only stayed clean 100%, but I have done work. I have continued to go to yoga. I've continued to go to sound healing sessions, um, drum circles, breath work detoxes, um, you name it. Anything that Catherine brings my way, as you can tell, I'm here today. Um, I commit to uh, because my life has gotten better. It has given me another option. And a lot of us addicts, when we're sent to detox and hospitals and programs, we don't get this option. Nobody says to us, hey, listen, this is holistic health care. IHS wants to, you know, bring you here and, and help you out with, you know, the mind, body, spirit aspect of your life, which is the most important to be worked on. If you don't work on that nitty gritty, deep down stuff, grief, that was the first step, right, Catherine? Yeah. Grief retreat at the um, Crown Plaza Hotel. That's, you know, after we met at the rally for recovery. And if I wasn't in recovery and if I wasn't doing the right things at that point, I would have never met Catherine. But we were, we, you know, our lives collided together and we've been for on this reason. path yeah. for a reason. Yeah. I mean, spiritual awakening, God is what I call it. Um, you know, had us intervene, and here we are today, uh, still working on everything that needs to be worked on. And I have faith, sticking with IHS, that I will hopefully be recovered one day um, and still continue to do all these things that, that, are, that are offered through IHS. And RAFA um, has been a huge part of my recovery. You know, I know I skipped a lot of things, but um, the point is, is, is I, I'm here, I'm alive, and what has gotten me to this point has been IHS and holistic healthcare. I'm going to be going to see a naturopathic doctor. Um, I mean, just all the doors that have opened up because of sticking with IHS is, it's huge. It's, it's life changing. It's a miracle. He didn't tell you the big one. He said to me a few months ago, oh he, said, he said, Catherine, I, you know, I want to have a career. I want more than just these stupid little jobs, as he kept calling to them. And he said, will you take me to CCRI, to an open house? I want to check it out. And I did. And so together we went to the open house, and right on the spot, he applied. He got accepted. And they helped him with financial aid right on the spot, and he won a full Pell Grant. And so wow. Jonathan is going to college in the fall. Hmm. I want to talk a, a little bit more about that when we come back, because i got to take a break so I can pay the bills. <laughs> You're watching Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. We'll be right back with a double header here right after these messages. And now, back to Recovery TV with your host, John J. Tassoni, Jr. Recovery TV is made possible by our supporting sponsors and our title sponsor, AdCare. Now, here's John and today's guest. Welcome back to Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. Jonathan and Catherine are here, and she's with the Integrated Healthcare Solutions. Um, they're doing good work. Thank you. They're doing good work, and here's a prime example of your work yeah and you know Jonathan you should be proud thank you you know the uh, issue with my program is all about hope hope and recovery you found it you're gonna deliver and I know you're gonna go a long way thank you because John. you have the mental capability and the drive that's the big thing to drive to make your life better so you're not sleeping on the street, you're not sleeping in the dumpster, you're not using substances. People who watch this show 
you are the Superman right now of recovery. You know, whether you want to hear that or yeah. not, you're, you're the Superman of recovery. Because there's so many people that I meet that say to me, I don't have a shot. I don't have a, I don't have a shot in hell that I'm going to make it. But you, on the other hand, have made it. You've come out of the dumpster. <laughs> you come off the street. You, now you're going to college. You will make something of yourself. Thank I know you. you will. I know you will because you have the drive. Yeah. You have the drive. Now, how many, how many clients uh, do you have right now? Well, to date, so I started this in 2018, and I've been piloting various programs in the community. So to date, we've helped over 700 people. We did just finish two holistic programs, two eight-week programs. One was for people that have lost someone to grief, and then the other was for people that were in recovery. So we had 20 people, and Jonathan was one of those people, that participated in an eight-week weekly program. And they're not just people in recovery. They also are workers and leaders in this whole community. They're out there on the front lines mm. doing this work. So they know every program that exists, and they repeatedly, everyone tells us that, Catherine, this doesn't exist. This holistic healing pathway is not being offered to us. You know, there's too many barriers to this types of care or education or support, and so we are providing that. And every week, the numbers would just grow and grow and grow, and it was tremendous. Mm. So, Jonathan, when you go to spaces when you have conversations with different people, what do they ask you? fellow people who are using? So, to be honest, I, I actually don't associate with anybody that, that uses anymore. Um, I don't go. Well, how about groups? You go to her groups. Um, you talk to other, other people that are in it. So... When they hear your story. I mean, I, I think everybody's proud and um, very caring and compassionate, um, understanding and um, very um, supportive. I think that's the biggest. I, when I go to Catherine's classes, since the grief retreat and then after the grief program and the recovery program, I mean, walking into this, these people, these sort of people are, um, it's something that you can't describe, I can't describe in words because I feel loved, I feel safe and secure more secure than I do at my own house. And um, not that I have an unsafe house situation, because yeah. I don't, but I think it's just real important to say how secure mm. I feel when I'm with Catherine and the people that, you know, come around when, you know, when, when we do have these groups. I mean, they are on the front lines. We have people that work for Marigold Health, Anchor Recovery, Project Weber. I mean, they, they're there, they're doing all the work and they're, Witnessing all the deaths as well. So mm. um, having a space like that and coming and being able to talk to these people and and feel accepted is it's you know I'm speechless. There's there's no words that can describe. Yeah, yeah the you feeling. know you know you said something earlier that is sticking in my brain when I asked you about the people that you associate with. So many people go into residential treatment and when they get out they go back to the same group of individuals that they hung around with and that's just a kiss of death no pun intended no change your people's places and things right i mean that's most important right and if as a as an addict if you don't know that that's i mean <laughs> that's something that really needs to be um validated mm. change the people you hang around with, the places you go, and... Um, How difficult was it? <laughs> I met Catherine and, like, my whole life changed. How difficult was that not to go back? Did you want to go back, or did you say, you know what, I'm done, I've had it? That last, right there, I... I came to my wit's end and I just had enough. It, it was just, <laughs> there was no more 
playing in the streets for me? I actually, at the grief retreat, that was a question that I asked in the room, which was, how much longer do you want to feel this way? And I actually remember you, and you were like, I am done. I don't want to feel this way. And so that's, I was like, good. You should be done, right? And so once you're done, and I think that's it, you have to be ready. Hmm. Jonathan was ready, but I think, too, it's work. Like, hmm. there's no Every magic day. pill. There's yeah. no magic procedure, no magic anything. It is daily work. And so some days he doesn't feel like going to yoga. Transportation is a challenge. And it's very challenging for him to get to go to do everything he needs to do. And he does it anyways. It's nerve-wracking for him to be here today. He, there's no options. He says, I'm going. I'm doing this. And I so, said that, right? yeah, he's breaking away Anything from his that fear. Anything Catherine texts me or calls me about and says, this is what's going on, I want you to come to this, there's no questions. It's just, it's always going to be a yes. Mm. Being here and this being a start of my journey and, and coming as far as I've, I've come already. And the only way, the only reason I'm able to say that is because I, I'm finally believing it myself because I have people around me that are actually telling me that. Believe in you. Yeah, yeah that, that believe in me. That well, I, I believe in you. Thank you, yeah. John. I believe in you because let me tell you something. When, you're, when you are at the point that you are at, whether you are going into dumpsters, sleeping on the street, making your way to Rhode Island, and now you're, gonna, you're going to college, that's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. That is a big deal. You know, maybe someday you'll write a book about that because it's going to be a bestseller. Yeah. That is yeah. a big, big deal. Thank you. Know? You I mean, the closest I ever came to college was driving by it. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, uh, but here you are. Uh, yeah. It's a big deal. It's We're going to take deal. a quick break. You're watching Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. We'll be right back after these messages. And now, back to Recovery TV with your host, John J. Tassoni, Jr. Recovery TV is made possible by our supporting sponsors and our title sponsor, AdCare. Now, here's John and today's guest. Welcome back to Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. Jonathan and Catherine are in the house. We're talking about Jonathan and his uh, road to recovery. What do you like to do, Jonathan, in your spare time? I uh, love to love to go to yoga um, at least twice a week. Um, any you know sessions or experiences that come up as far as <clears throat> the holistic um, lifestyle approach, you know, sound healings, um, breath work, detoxes. I will go to, um, and I love playing the piano. I have been playing since I was a child, so. Being in recovery and sober and, and attentive has given me the uh, ability to continue to play. Um, and that's what I do at home for fun. Um, if I'm not with Catherine, talking to Catherine, or, or <laughs> any other people from you know the groups that I've met. Self-taught? Um, Are you self-taught? Did you take uh, lessons? My, my mother taught me. She's a piano teacher, so oh, I... Oh, okay. I, um, well, and still that's, like have Zoom meetings with her um, once yeah. a week. You know, oh. she once gives me a, a lesson over over FaceTime. But you also too through this journey, he reconnected with his mom because yeah. they weren't connected because of this. Mm. And I asked him, "Have you it's spoke great. to your mom?" And he said, "No." And I said, "She needs to know that you're doing Speak well." Speak to your mom yesterday. I did. Good. Yeah. yeah wished her happy yeah. birthday and a happy Mother's Day. My mother's happy. birthday is May 14th. So well, let me let me tell you something, Jonathan. I have had a lot of people sitting in that seat, and I'm going to tell you, you 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 are over here yeah. with me right now. Thank and, you, John. And what you've done, you know, we're going to love to have you come back, play the piano a little bit for us, <laughs> and I want to know how you're doing in school because if not. I don't care if you're bigger than me. I'll still kick your butt. <laughs> so Thank go you, back John. to school. Thank you. You've been watching Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. We'll see you next week.